Hey guys, welcome back to Hero Mesha channel. Today we are at Central Deborah Gold Mine in Bendigo. This is one of the famous tourist attractions in the city Bendigo in Victoria. So this is our first time visiting a gold mine and we were so excited. At Central Deborah Gold Mine, you will discover more about Bendigo's golden past at a real gold mine that operated during the gold rush boom of the 1900s. This is located in the heart of the Bendigo city at number 76 Violet Street. If you book a tour, you can explore the hidden underground tunnels of a real gold mine here. You can purchase the tickets at the venue or do it online by visiting www.central-deborah.com. We started our tour by exploring the surface above the ground. The surface of the mine contains the original buildings which are actually heritage listed now and equipment that were essential to the operation of the mine in the past. So this is how people, basically the miners have used the elevator to access the underground tunnel. You can go inside and explore different buildings used by the miners in the past like a miners change room, blacksmith shop, the first aid room and a carbide lamp room etc. And the engine room is the place to explore. It's time to go underground, descend to the depth of the Bendigo like a real miner. The elevator takes you 61 meters underground to the tunnels. When you are there, you can experience what conditions as a miner were really like during the harsh gold rush. You also can witness the traditional mining equipment in action and also see gold in its natural state. Uh, for any two middle compartments, they put the working compartments. 
compartments. One cage goes up in one, the other one goes down in the other. So you can bring things underground while taking things out at the same time. Efficiency means profit. Mining is all about profit. Keep that in mind along the way on the tour today. The whole shaft in there behind me is lined with timber. Timber's red gum, loves the wet conditions. Keep it wet and damp, it won't run down on the grade. Timber that you're looking at in there behind me was put in there in 1941. Still fine. Red button in the middle of the shaft here. If you press it, it rings a bell. On every level of the mine end up on the surface. Bells are how they communicate. Sort of like Morse code for mining. Every level has its own code, every command has its own code. We still use the bells to this day because we still use the cages to this day. Along with the course being good, any ideas? Gold. 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 Perfect answer, gold. Gold, who this mine makes profit of. Quartz is the only thing that gold's going to be. Quartz has profit here for the company. Everything else is bad because there's no chance of gold being in it and it's in our way. What you're looking at here is the waste. In mining, the waste rock's called the mullet. It's just a technical term. Really what you're looking at here in the mullet is any sandstone or slate. Over 90% of the mullet you're going to see today is going to be sandstone. 8 to 10 times harder than concrete. Hard rock. The reason this is called a hard rock is that's very much in the mine. You might also see some slate through the area, like this stuff here. That's probably going to cover 3, 4% of what you're going to see today in the mullet. Um, Often you can just break this out with your hands and stuff it. You can set a little bit just done there. Just watch this. So, big difference in strength between those two. But both of them are sedimentary rocks, and what that means is they're formed at the bottom of an ocean. Formed between 480 to 500 million years ago, these ones. Formed from the sand, the sediment, the dirt, getting moshed off the land mass into the ocean, everything settles to the ocean floor and gets cemented in place over millions of years worth of pressure pushing down on it. They date the rocks to that time period because of fossils they find in them. They got paid by the distance they went through the waste rock in two weeks, but most of their money was made at the quartz room. If you're extracting quartz from the mine, they're paid by how many tonnes of quartz they get out of the mine. Good contract miner in this mine in 1952 on average earning 22 to 24 pound a week. Convert that to Australian dollars value these days, you'd be looking at three and a half to four grand a week. Mm. About 200,000 a year, pretty comparable to a professional miner working in Western Australia flying in and out of Calgary. Alright, find a spot where you can have a look at a window, find some gold. Shouldn't have too many problems finding gold in there. At least 20 grand worth of gold in the three windows. That's why it's locked up. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a small section of a saddle reef. This is only a tiny bit of a reef here. Saddle reefs start thin on the legs at the sides and as they curl over into that saddle shape they tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker and thicker. The peak of the reef is called the cap of the reef. That's what you're looking at behind these windows, the cap of the saddle reef. Below the cap in centre country is normally the biggest, thickest area of quartz on a saddle reef. Those areas can get up to 15 metres wide by 15 metre high bodies of quartz. There's a lot of quartz beneath your feet right now that you can't see in relation to this reef. This reef doesn't just stop here. It keeps going, rising and falling along the 15 k's of the Bendigo field. This is a payable reef. If they had have found this in the old days, they would have mined it out. We need to drill holes in the rock. You right? You blow it up with explosives. It's the only way to get the rock out of here. We get a lot of people who come down into these, this mine and they try and tell me that all these mines are dug in with a pickaxe and a shovel. If anyone tells you that in a hard rock mine like this, they're either lying to you or they do not know what they're talking about. All of these hard rock mines were all blasted out with explosives from the 1850s onwards. No exceptions. Okay? Now, I think a lot of people get confused because in the early days, in the 1850s and early 1860s, they were drilling the holes into the rock by hand and then packed with explosives. Now, we've been using the hammer in that method. Sledgehammer and chisel over there next to our little miner um, in the orange, bright fluorescent orange panels there. So, sledgehammer, think about double the size and weight of that one. Chisel, up to a metre long. One man holds the chisel on the rock face, turns with a quarter of a turn, the other guy hits it as hard as he can with a 12 pound sledgehammer. 
using that method you can drill a hole and made a deep in sandstone in about four hours or two. So they started with 1867 they start to mechanise with drills like this green one on the right hand side. So this one's technical name is a stroker or a reciprocator. Most people know them as hammer drills. It's run off compressed air. It's a two man operation on this one. One man on the lever at the back, back and forth on the lever. Bang, bang, smashing the hole. But we need the drill steel to turn. So it chips away the rock. Don't turn the drill, it's just gonna get blunt or stuck. So we've got another man up the front here. There's a hole through the drill steel here. Put a bar through the hole. The other guy's up the front. Turn, turn, turn between every hit. Now this one will drill a hole for you a metre deep in 40 to 45 minutes through sandstone. So it's much, much quicker, but it's drilling through the rock quicker, that creates more dust. If you drill through quartz, it creates silica dust. If you breathe silica dust into your lungs, you're going to end up with silicosis and you will eventually die from it. So a young man, like we said before, starts at 12 years old in the 1870s, consistently exposed to the dust as he's through his working life, lucky to live to 35. 30s on average, not in 20s, but some miners died in their late 20s from silicosis if they were susceptible to it, if they had lung issues to start with, it's going to happen quicker. Some miners might have lasted a little bit longer into their early 40s. Either way, if you're exposed to the dust, you were going to 100% die from silicosis, unless something else got you in there. Okay? So, that is a widow maker. This one in particular was made in Bendigo in 1884. After exploring the gold mines, we decided to get on board a vintage walking tram to explore the Bendigo city in a more fun way. You can catch this tram from the Deborah gold mine. All you need to do is purchase a ticket which is valid for one day. This is a hop in hop off tram so you get the time to get off the tram and explore different locations in the city as you prefer. It was such a joyful ride, a very unique experience. You will definitely admire the craftsmanship of these old trams. a day in Bendigo. If you ever visit Bendigo, don't forget to do these two activities. And thank you for watching. Until we meet again, keep calm and travel on.